into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. The Lord is good and his love is everlasting. Welcome to People Get Ready. I'm Juliette Coley and this 100th Psalm nicely captures the mood of tonight's program, a program of worship and praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Please give a warm welcome to my co-presenter, John Francis. It's a well-known song you're playing. It was actually written over a hundred years ago by the American songwriter George Bernard. Yes, um, the Old Rugged Cross is a great song. It's not only been sung, you know, around Easter time, but we tend in our churches to sing it all the year through because really salvation begins at the Old Rugged Cross. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Can I get a witness here? The emblem of suffering and change. You see, I love that old cross where the dearest and blessed for a world of lost sinners was
quite used to standing up before a lot of people and speaking about your faith. Is that's that correct? Right. That's right. Tell us a bit about what you do. Well, every time I wake up in the morning, I tell God to give me an opportunity to tell people about his love and about his power and about what he has to offer them. So when I go out, I just look for opportunities to tell people about God. Right. You're talking about in church or you're talking about out of church? I do it anywhere. In church, out of church, on the bus, on the tubes, in the streets. If I bump into people in public, lose. <laughs> I tell them about him. Sometimes I smile a lot and I'm always full of happiness and I bubble with joy and energy and people do comment about it so I tell them the source of all this joy and this peace that flows from me and other times if they strike up a conversation with me then I use that opportunity to tell them. There's a phrase in the Bible that says that um, God can forgive us for all our sins. What does that phrase mean to you? It means so much to me because I wouldn't be where I am now without God's forgiving power and his grace. I have been through it. I have been a church, um, born again for about 11 years now, 10, 11 years. And, but I was leading a double life. Um, I got pregnant. And it was at, at a time when I had great responsibility in the church as well. People used to look up to me. What were you doing in the church at the time? I was secretary for my church. All right. Now, making the mission like that, you know, on television obviously takes a lot of courage. I mean, how do you think people are going to react to, to you saying that? There's, you can't hide anything from God, but the thing is, when you know that God has forgiven you, you have confidence in that because then he makes it all right. He makes people realise the change inside of you and they can forgive you. It's not easy, but he gives you the strength to do it. And really, when you know that you've been forgiving, nothing matters anymore. Nothing matters anymore. You're so free, liberated, you can shout it from the rooftops, just tell people about it. What sort of support did you get from your church? I thank God for my pastor. He was wonderful. He counseled me. He encouraged me that if I turn to the Lord, then God would forgive. And God says that he forgives and he doesn't remember your sin anymore. And I did exactly that. It wasn't easy. So how do you feel when you come across difficult situations? I have a conscience that works over time. I always, I used to feel very, very guilty if I did the slightest thing. But now that I've realized that God has completely wiped away my sin and he doesn't remember them anymore and he doesn't hold that against me, when I come across every situation, I go into that situation and I tackle that situation knowing that the full force of God, the whole, full power of God is behind me. Just. Being forgiven by God is so great. I feel free. I wish everybody could experience that.
he shall know the truth. God's truth. God's truth. God's truth. It's about him up. Say yeah. Put your hands for Jesus. And now, as they say, for something completely different. Listen. Yeah. Won't you say once more I love you in the bread and in the wine? Till the whole world knows I love so. I am yours and you are mine. And they won't you say once more I love you in the bread and in the wine? gospel group. You know, why do you choose to sing a cappella? Well, as you know, Juliet, a cappella means without musical accompaniment. And uh, we believe that gospel music sometimes tends to mask the natural beauty of the, of the harmonies, choral harmonies. So we thought, well, we'd sing without music this time because we want to bring out our natural harmonies, the beauty of our voices. Right, and what's the reaction you get from your a cappella audiences? People have respond very well to us. Um, because they can hear the voices? That's right. And uh, Sometimes they come back to us and they'll say, you know, you really blessed my soul, you really touched me. And although we're not a rousing gospel group, we still believe that we have a ministry, an evangelical ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, our belief, our belief is that we actually refresh and soothe the soul. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Thank you to Una Higgins and the Leeds Choral Gospel. Yeah. Now that's a familiar tune. It's the Servant King and it's Graham Kendrick. <laughs> Now, Graham, you're well known as a praise and worship song leader. What does the term praise and worship mean to you? Well, the, uh, the word worship actually comes from an old English word, worship, which is to express the value that you put on something. So, Really, when we worship, we're showing how much we think God is worth. We're showing <laughs> him that. And, and we're showing the world that as well. Well, I often watch church services on television, yeah, and I notice they're adopting this type of praise and worship. Um, is this a trend of things to come? Uh, I guess all around the world there is a whole kind of new wave of, of, of worship. Uh, a lot of people are, are finding God in their own experience and they want to express that mm -hmm. in worship and there's a whole lot of new songs being, uh, being written all around the world. But uh, really it's because people are discovering God for themselves. You see, see worship is the overflow of, of a relationship with God. It's not just singing songs. It, it really is... Uh, it really is a response to what you're finding out about God, and it flows out of, out of your heart. You know, you, you can sing a song and not worship, yeah. you know? Um, uh, Jesus said uh, about a whole lot of very religious people, he said, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. From them you came, helpless babe. Into our world, your 
your glory then Not to be served, but to serve And give your life that we might
everybody stand. Let's bow our heads. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We glorify your name. We praise you right now. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for putting bread upon our table. Thank you for being good to us, Lord. You've been better to us than what we have been to ourselves. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We praise you. We lift you up. For your name is worthy to be praised. From the uprising of the sun even to the going down there of your name. Your name is worthy to be praised. And we praise you right now. We glorify you. Take no praise for ourselves. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Let everybody say amen, amen. And let's sing the song together. Oh, oh. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's show, and on next week's People Get Ready, we have from America, Thomas Whitfield, John Zone Inspirational Choir, Jubilant Voices, and Marjorie Francis. Good night. Under the piano colors, the byways of Picardy, not the fast lane, may suit your mood. Don't just get across to France, cruise across to Picardy with P&O European Ferries. For instant access to rates like this, call us now. If you want to be cool this summer, chill out with a Munch Bunch and get a free pair of shades just like Andy's. The Munch Bunch. Yo, yogurt. Roger, little pie! Tuesday at 10, Peter Sellers in a two-way stretch. Oh, God, yeah. You should never let him do it. Beyond Ealing. This is London Weekend Television. And now Paul Coyer appeals on behalf of Q and Review, talking magazines for the blind and partially sighted. Hello and a very good evening to you. Now this is Q and Review and it offers a recording service for the blind and partially sighted throughout Britain. It was started by pupils at a Glasgow high school in 1982 and those same young people are still involved with this magnificent charity. Now, I first got to know them when they were based in a school store cupboard. Then they were making recordings in the most difficult conditions imaginable. But through their own determined efforts, they've built their own recording studio 
and they've raised the money to run the only talking magazine service for the blind and partially sighted in Britain. They've got a team of 20 volunteers, and without any government or local funding, they record a whole range of talking magazines covering pop music, sport, fashion, and the latest in heavy metal music. The tapes are for the young in heart who are blind or partially sighted. Let's hear from some of their customers. Cune Review has meant to me an independence over the last couple of years. I no longer have to depend on the written printed word. I can listen to tapes and keep up with local information, which has proven valuable the last few years. It keeps me informed of all what's going on in the local area, and I don't have to rely on anyone else, apart from Cune Review. I think it's a very valuable service. It keeps trees in touch with the outside world rather than me just relaying things to her. And it does give her a sense of independence as well, that she doesn't have to rely on me to tell her everything that's happening. You like playing the tapes in your own bedroom, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you can turn them up as loud as you like. Oh, no. And we don't hear you? No. <laughs> Sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. You like all the pop music, don't you? That's right. Uh -huh. 